Hi everyone, this is Lori Gracie, the TCEA Executive Director, uh, coming to talk with you today about how we can stay connected, how we can still have our relationships with our staff and students, whether we are working from home or in my case, from a completely empty TCEA office building. Right now, this is kind of how we all feel with the virus going on. We're, we're behind this barricade. We're kind of like lepers. Nobody wants to be near us or touch us for your students. Um, it's very confusing. Uh, whether they are kindergarten or seniors, this is a really tough time for them. Being at home all the time with mom and dad and their siblings, not being able to socialize, not knowing when this could end or could change and what their future is going to hold it's really, really tough on the kids. And in fact, we can kind of think back to the Apollo 11 mission uh, when they came back and they had to live in that little trailer for so long. Uh, still better, I guess, than the space capsule, but um, it's still a, a tough feeling to be so remote. So how, what are some ways that we can do, things that we can do to make this better for people and, and help them to stay connected? So let's talk about those. First off, Every time you get a chance, you need to check in with people. You need to say, how are you doing? How are you handling this? Uh, do you have toilet paper? Are you doing okay? Do you need anything? Do you sometimes need just to have somebody listen to you? Um, and what would you like to share with me? You wanna tell me about a particularly great thing that happened to you yesterday at your house or something not so great or whatever? We need to check in and, and still have those conversations with our people. We also need to make sure that we're doing a lot of showing and not just telling. Um, it's very important during this time that we use pictures and graphics with people um, so that their brains are, are being stimulated and, and connecting with us, okay? A lot of audio is not gonna do you a lot of good. Use those pictures. And speaking of pictures, we definitely, if you're using Zoom or Google Classroom or anything else, any other type of video screencasting things, let's get your pictures out there. Um, it, there's nothing more frustrating than talking to Jenny and Aaron here in my screencast and not to have anybody else talking back to me, looking at me. Turn your camera on. I know a lot of us are camera shy and we're not comfortable with this, but they've been looking at you all this time anyway, and uh, it's okay. Show your face. Let them connect with you, okay? You also need, again, regardless of the age of your students or whether you're talking about your staff members, you need to give them time to just talk to each other, to socialize. They are really missing that right now, okay? Um, so give them some time to chat. Now, obviously it has to be appropriate chat and we've still got to monitor that, but you can pair them up and ask them just to share, you know, what are, what are they feeling? What are they most frustrated about? What good things are they doing? Did they see a cool show on Netflix or something, you know? Um, you can even have them talk about, hey, what, what games are you playing now? What, what is your family doing that normally they haven't been? Give them a chance to just talk, not about your content, but just about themselves and their lives. That's really critical. And I think especially for our, our, our teenagers, I know we think that they are the digital generation and they are to, in many respects, but they are really seeing their peers on a daily basis. So let's definitely be sure that we're giving them that time to interact. You need to make it fun, okay? Um, sitting in front of your computer screen for six or eight hours a day is not their idea of fun, especially if they're having to do their content areas. So play a game. Um, have them do silly hat day. Everybody's got a hat at the house. Everybody wear a hat in their pictures. Uh, invite them one of the first few days. Show your pet. Uh, show your parents. Um, you know, show something fun, okay? Uh, I love this that I got from Twitter uh, where the teachers are doing a mass singer game using Flipgrid. So one of the teachers will be chosen that day uh, by the faculty and they put on some kind of mask and uh, do a little flip grid recording. They kind of disguise their voice as much as they can. And then the students have to respond on flip grid who they think it is and why they think it is. Uh, they may give them some clues and things. It, it's just a, a really, really fun thing to do. It has nothing to do with your content again. It's about forming those connections that we need to feel. Um, the first Monday that my staff worked from home, 
we uh, did a Kahoot game just about them, not about TCEA, not about things we're working on, but about them and, and different facts so that we could connect on a different level and make sure that was happening. More fun, tell a joke. Um, younger kids especially love those really corny jokes, okay, knock knock jokes, any of those. So let them know you're going to have a joke every day that you're going to share with them, okay, or have them share some jokes. Um, do dress up as your favorite character. Now it's going to be tough because we can only use what we've got at the house, so allow them some flexibility and then ask other people to check out who do they think they are, make a guess. Um, tell them that tomorrow we're going to have music day and everybody has to find something to play at their house. Now this does not have to be a real musical instrument. Maybe they're going to get a pot and a spoon and they're going to beat on that. Maybe they've got one of their band instruments from home. Whatever, we're all going to then try and play a song that they would know. And it's not going to be great. It's going to be terrible. And they're going to laugh. And that's the idea. Do this with your adults too, with your staff, okay? Make them participate. Make them have some fun. It'll relieve the tension. And again, remind them that they're not alone. We're all in this together. How can you build your team so that they can work virtually together? Yes, for your students and your staff, they've been working together all year long, but it's a little different now. And, and the fact that we may be in our homes for a long time means that we're kind of starting to distance ourselves. So let's do some of those team building activities that would work well and make sure we're still connected. Just a few of them um, encourage everybody to change their Zoom background, okay? It has to be appropriate, obviously. Have them put up a picture of where they wish they could be today. Could be in a cartoon, could be on a mountain somewhere, uh, could be at a rock concert, whatever they wanna do. Uh, encourage them carefully to take a photo and show something important at their house. Now, obviously you're gonna have to make sure that these are appropriate, you know? So this is where maybe having them put them in a flip grid or in your Google Classroom would be good so you could check them first, okay? Uh, but then you can have them talk about what's important and why it's important. Um, give them a prompt, like a giant box is delivered to your front doorstep with your name on it. What's inside and what happens when you open it? And then encourage them to go out and find a meme, again, an appropriate one, on the internet that represents this and have them share. Uh, later on, then they can write a story about that if you want. Uh, play the emoji game. Let's say favorite book, favorite book that you've ever read and you need to create a pictogram using only emojis to talk about the title of the book. Now this can be really complicated. So you're not gonna do a whole bunch of them in one day. You would have everybody create one and then maybe pick one a day to do. And then the others have to guess what is the title of that book. Um, pixel art. I can remember when we did this a thousand years ago when spreadsheets first came out. And, and if you put in certain, um, formulas into Google Sheets, it will replace those numbers with a color for that cell. Uh, and then you can paint pictures. Uh, there's uh, some links there for you that are going to include some ways to get started on that. And then you could do a little competition with your students to see who can produce the best picture. This is great for adults too, to be honest. Quite frankly, we're all looking for things to fill the time at home with something different that'll keep our brains engaged. Um, you can do virtual Pictionary, okay? So here's today's vocabulary word, here's today's math example, here's today's science concept. Draw it, you can use this using Google Draw or any drawing program you've got, and the other team has to guess what it is. Um, this is really good, macro photos. This is where they, they hone in almost microscopically to an image, and you show one picture and everybody has to, has to guess about what it is. You know, maybe it's the eyelashes of a bumblebee or something, but you would never know that. And I've given you some links there of some that you can use with your classes. Even more fun activities, do a virtual dance party. Yes, we're all going to look ridiculous. Put on some fun music and have everybody get up and dance however they want to, just for that short amount of time less than a minute usually, okay? You don't have to play the whole song. It's just to get them up, get them moving, get them thinking outside the box. And again, we're connecting, okay? And then also you should think about reading to them. I mean, even adults like to be read to, not for hours at a time. These would be very short. And find something that's not too serious. We all have enough serious things on our mind. So let's find something that's kind of fun or silly 
um, maybe little comedy pieces, maybe something like even a children's book for adults that can make us feel better. These are all good. And then join in and read to them. We also need to talk about being healthy. It's going to be very easy while staying at home to develop those bad habits of eating everything in sight, going through our stash of food we have for the quarantine, uh, not getting enough exercise and movement and putting on some weight. So let's make sure that we're encouraging everybody to have some healthy habits too while we're staying connected. I encourage virtual walking Wednesday or Tuesday or Friday, doesn't really matter what day. Encourage your folks to get out in the yard, around the block if it's appropriate for that, okay? And take a photo of something interesting and then share it the next day, okay? Uh, encourage group snack time. Everybody bring a snack and we're gonna eat with everybody else while we just connect and talk, doing some of those other activities. You do have to be cautious with this one if your students perhaps are, are not having healthy snacks at home available to them. If um, they're on the free and reduced lunch program and they're having trouble getting their food and stuff, you do wanna be very cognizant of that. It works really well for students that you know will have some kind of snack food at home and it works well for adults. Uh, workout challenge. Okay, let's all um, say today's challenge is for everybody to do 10 jumping jacks, okay? And if you do that, then you go in into Google Classroom and, and you put a star next to your name uh, showing that you've done that, okay? And we're just going to keep track of that. Um, you can also encourage them to drink lots of water. Probably most of us are not drinking enough water, okay, during this time. Um, so make it a drinking game about water, of course. Uh, every time somebody says, you're muted, or you're not muted, or I can't hear you, or any of those other common things we're hearing when we do the remote learning. And everybody at that point has to take a drink, okay, of water. Um, also take a little stretch break. Sitting again in our chair for too long is not healthy for us. So let's see if we can all stand up and stretch, lead your kids through it very briefly. Uh, have the kids share their favorite food. What are they enjoying? I know at my house, I am cooking like crazy. My family's loving that because I don't normally do a lot of cooking for them. So they are enjoying all their favorite comfort foods. We can share that with people, uh, what we're having, and then we can craft it to see what is most popular with us. Um, challenge them, challenge them to do a push up, a sit up, a wall sit, a something, and you do it first to show them how to do it, and then they have to show you that they've done it. So all that we're doing here to stay healthy, which also is helping us to stay connected. Keep in mind that this is a stressful time for everyone, okay? And that this whole working from home, working on the computer is not second nature to really any of us, okay? This is not what we're used to doing Monday through Friday. So be nice about that and understand and encourage them to smile and know that this will pass and we will all be back together at some point and it's gonna be fine. To get this presentation as a handout, you can go to this website and it'll have all of these ideas for you. Also remember that you can go to tca.org slash remote hyphen learning, to get lots more videos and resources on how you can do remote learning with your students and with your staff. And finally, remember that right now, TCA is offering free membership in the organization for a year and free membership in our six special interest groups for a year just by going to tca.org slash membership. And that is available to anyone in the world who is interested in ed tech. I hope you have a great job and you stay connected with each other and with TCEA. Thanks.